welcome to the Vault Podcast and Reviews, where music still matters. You can check out everything we're doing at facebook.com slash the vault RVWS, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash the vault reviews. We're on Stitcher at the vault music one for Twitter at the vault reviews on Instagram and send us anything you feel like sending us the vault music one at gmail.com. And we're back with another review today. We're going to do West side connection bow down 1996. Robbie, was this your pick, I believe? Yeah, yeah, this is one that I wanted to do. And it's funny that you picked it because this was almost like a throwback for me big time because this was, let's see, I was 12 years old at the time, and I was, like, super getting into this kind of gangster rap stuff in the mid-'90s that, like, MTV started pushing. Yeah. So I was kind of excited to do it, you know, a throwback. uh, And I have it on my iPod, so it's not like I don't ever listen to it, but – uh, before we get started, check us out, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Podomatic. Check us out on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Let us know what you think. If you want to send in or something you want to see reviewed, let us know. Um, you can also do that at thevaultmusic1 at gmail.com. We've been getting a lot more requests lately, so thank you for that. And we're going to get to those as soon as we can. We're kind of getting backed up on them, and then we had some that we handpicked. So, Robbie, take it away. Um, well, yeah, like I said, this, uh, bow down, it came out in 1996. Uh, like I said, my favorite thing is, is West coast gangster rap from like the night, the early nineties, mid nineties. Plus you have three awesome gangster rappers in this group. You got ice cube, dub C and Mac 10, who at the time, at least Mac 10 and ice cube, both were having pretty successful careers solo. Right. Um, in 96. Uh, so for them just to jump in and make an album together was pretty cool. They actually made a couple, but this one was, was pretty awesome. <laughs> what do you think about it? Um, I I thought I read somewhere where it was like, it was number two on the billboard 200 in 1996. Like, that's awesome. Think about that. Like, think of what is on the charts right now in, in 2016, this album's 20 now now transport 20 years ago and an album (laughs) like this could be up to number two. I mean, that is just, that's that's a sad state of affairs. If you ask me about what we're in right now. That is absolutely the truth. I mean, man, this album was this album's pretty gangster, um, especially to be number two on the Billboard charts. You know, there must have been a lot more gangster stuff happening in '96. You're gonna get me on a total side rant here because I was looking at the Billboard 200 the other day, and I I didn't even know who half the people were, and then there was a lot of bro country on there, and oh, yeah. uh, Bieber was on there, of course. Oh yeah, but and but then like there was very little rap. And then when I did find it, I didn't even, I either didn't know who they were. I was like, Oh man, they're super weak, super weak, man. And it's like, you know, their rhymes aren't good enough. So they just cover themselves in auto tune from head to toe. And then it just comes out even worse. None of it is gangster. If 1996 rappers met up with 2016 rappers, it wouldn't even be a competition. Oh no, there'd be, there'd be people dead. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. These were real gangsters shooting people. And man, but yeah, this was a uh, this was a good album, and one thing that I I pick out of this is you know rappers always rep where they're from, you know they're always proud of their neighborhood, but I don't think anybody loves being from South Central LA more than these guys do. I mean they are always talking about it, like you know representing South uh, South LA and you know LA and all that, and um, they love it. Always say West Side, you know I mean they hold it out for like six seconds and. Gotta love it. I've just got so many things I want to touch on, but they're kind of sporadic. So uh, kind of just go where you want with it. I love their voice inflection on this album. Like just the way they say stuff, you know, like B-I-H, a West Side. And, I mean, it's just so hard, so gangster. One of the rawest gangster albums to, that was popular in 96, at least in my opinion. Uh, they, they use a lot of cool slang too. Um, he, he makes a lot of references to, you know, we big fish and y'all guppies. He says that a lot, which I think is kind of a funny reference. I'd never, I don't think I've heard anybody else ever say guppies. that. Guppies. <laughs> yeah, calling everybody guppies. I don't, I don't know, but uh, he says it all gangster. It's all guppies. So it's like, oh, okay, Ice Cube, I get it. <laughs> I'm a guppy, but that's one thing I wanted to touch on too is that everything they say in this album has like force with it. You yeah, know what I mean, they're not, they're not doing what they do now, where they're just like talking over a beat, you know. And then putting auto tune on it, or uh, what? What is that one? Got T Pain? Yeah, T Pain. <laughs> that what? What is that? Uh, anyway, back back to this. Um, everything they say is with force, and like coming from 
like it's weird that I started out before anything listening to hip hop and rap, but then I got even more into metal. But then that kind of brought me back to being able to uh, decipher through the crap of hip hop and rap and then pick out the yeah. stuff I liked. And this is, you know, one of them, like I said, they bring it, you know, they got yep. the attitude, the attitude they, they rep what they talk about and they're doing it. <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, I, I, I jotted down a line that, that one of them says, and he's like, stop playing sports to slang keys, blame it on my knees. <laughs> God. It just, the way they say that stuff, man, it's so hard. And they're just like, it's like, yeah. Fuck and I think a lot, of that stuff, a lot of that stuff I thought was super cool back then, but uh, oh, yeah. when I listen to it now, I'm just, I, I kind of laugh and just kind of nod my head in, in agreement yeah. of some sort. I don't want to sell keys, <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, like, like the way that they say it and their pronunciation, though, I'm just yeah. like, uh. <laughs> Blame it on my knees. <laughs> All um, right, what else you got? Oh, man, a lot of stuff. They dissed, I, or they dissed uh, Cypress Hill on this album two times. Because Cypress Hill's from South Central LA also, and they're, they're bloods, you know, at least B Row was, you know, he's saying crack and stuff back in the day, but he uh, doesn't get that kind of gangster rep like a lot of them do. And so Ice Cube's verse on Cross Him Out with a K disses him. And then they did King of the Hill, which is an entire song dedicated to dissing Cypress Hill. <laughs> and they're like, uh, one of the things is like, uh, what's wrong with B-Real's voice? It sounds like he got baby nuts or some shit like that. But they just totally dog on Cypress Hill. And, and that was in 96. I mean, Cypress Hill was doing things in 96. I like them. Um, I don't know what the beef was, but, man, they tore them up pretty good on these two songs. I'd like to be interested in looking up and see if Cypress Hill ever had, like, a, a, a diss track come back on him. You know what I mean? Because – I don't know, you know, the way that Ice Cube and Mac 10, like, first of all, his name's Mac 10. Like, I don't know if I'd want to do a diss track back to him. You know? Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> Might show up with the crew and wax my ass. <laughs> in that in that time yeah. period, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shoot me up, man. I, I ain't playing that. But, uh, but yeah, I, I don't, you know, I didn't agree with the Cypress Hill diss. I like Cypress Hill, but it was still pretty funny. Uh, they, they dig him up pretty good, man. They get him, get him pretty good on it. Yeah, uh, one other thing I really liked is uh, the term gangsters don't dance, we boogie. You know, I like that a lot. <laughs> and uh, the one thing that Ice Cube do, does on a lot of his songs back in this time period was like, <laughs> you know, yeah, um, yeah. Like in, before his verses, I don't know why he was doing that, but hey, it uh, grabs your attention. Like, oh man, Ice Cube's about to say something. One thing I had that was an interesting note the gangsta killing and dope dealer. Yeah. He's a sample from the Nine Inch Nails song Hurt. Which really? Johnny, which Johnny Cash then later covered. Uh, they make a Beatles reference too. Uh, what he's like, what would you do if I punked your whole crew? Would you pack up and run like a bitch? So they, they, uh, they stole that that melody at least when they sang those gangster words with it. <laughs> so you got the Beatles, Nine Inch Nails, and Johnny Cash all connected to this album. <laughs> right, that's crazy, huh? Number two yeah. on the Billboard charts, also in '96. Of course, that's... yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that was that was awesome. Uh, what were some of your favorite songs off it? Gangsters make the world go round. Who banging and all the critics in New York? There you go. Hey, that was uh, a good one too, man. They straight diss every rapper in New York too. Like, <laughs> fuck, you guys, fuck all of you guys. Like, if you're on the East Coast, if you're from where we're from, fuck you. <laughs> they just came hard on everybody. Uh, uh, what else you got before we get into the negatives? Uh, well, my favorite songs I have were uh, Who Bangin'. Of course, that was a great one. Uh, that's probably my all-time favorite on the album. And then uh, Westward Ho was, was my other favorite yep. one. I want to go back to Gangsters Make the World Go Around real quick. All right. For, first time I heard this song, I'm so irritated that I cannot remember the call name or call numbers of the radio station. Mm. And I don't know that you remember this, but what is now Missouri State University used to have a college radio station on Thursday nights at like nine or 10 o'clock till like midnight. And all they did is play this kind of music. And I mean, it was like new release stuff. Like I remember hearing, I don't remember what album it was, but it was one of the LL Cool J songs and they were playing it and they were playing just a clip of it. And he's like, well, we're going to try and play this next week, but we got to clean it up for the radio. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, they, awesome. would play, they would play a lot of this stuff and Gangsters Make the World Go Round is one of the first songs that I heard on this radio station with, I mean, they were playing all kinds of really obscure stuff like uh, Lunas. That's where I first heard them. That's where I first yeah. heard Nas and AZ. And I'm sure there's there's other ones that I remember hearing the songs, and I can't even remember the right. name of the artist. But um, Junior, they played a ton of Junior Mafia. Oh, Junior Mafia! They were 
dirty, grimy gangster yeah. rap. Yeah, and they were playing that stuff. I mean, they, they would awesome. edit out certain things, but they try to squeak in certain things also. But yeah. that's one reason I like this song, because it kind of just takes me back to when I was 12 years old, just amazed that the stuff was coming out. So Yeah, this um, is like an awesome radio station. I wish there were still radio stations that played just 90s gangster rap. <laughs> again, again, you know, you hear, you hear these people like, Back in the 80s when things were good. Well, we're talking about back in the mid-90s, and it was even good. And the 90s sucked, apparently, for music compared to the 80s for the most part, and even the 70s. So, ugh, yeah. look where we're at now in 2016. Aye, yeah. aye, aye. It's brutal. Classic, the classic <laughs> classic music in you know 20 years from now is going to be horrible. Like I don't even know what people are going to listen to anymore. They have to listen to the music we listen to because their music sucks too bad. Not to get on a side rant here, but there are still good artists that put out oh, yeah. new new stuff now. It's just yeah. it's so different because you know, here we're talking about an album that was number 2 on Billboard charts and you could hear it on the radio and uh now look what's played and th- this would not even sniff the radio cuz it's not politically correct and whatnot, but Oh, no, it's far from it. It's they're gangster, man. They just talk about shooting people and doing drive-bys and all kinds of stuff. So what negatives do you have? Um, the only negative I could really think of is, uh, it's it, like I said, it's super gangster and it's believable because of the way they, they present it. But I feel like it's almost a, a fabricated gangster, you know, like um, like Cottonmouth Kings, you know, they only talk about smoking pot. And these guys, like, they're so gangster, that's all they talk about, which isn't a bad thing. But um, I feel like it's – they push it too much you know what i mean like they're trying to uh oversell the gangsterness of the time because that's what was popular in 96 i agree but probably for a different reason i agree because of the overall presentation of the music um so keep in mind this 96 this to me this is kind of the end of the gangster rap Oh, yeah, because, absolutely. you know, not too far after this, we start having a lot of the what I like to call money rap come out where that's all they want to talk about, uh, you know, right. into the late 90s and then the early 2000s. Cash money and all those guys. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, they were still talking about some, you know, pretty, pretty gritty stuff also. But oh, yeah. it was more about the money and all that kind of st- money and dope, basically. Instead yep. of shooting people, <laughs> your master P and stuff like that. Yeah, which I like all those guys too. But I'm I'm just saying like, um, this is kind of a turn I think for the for the genre, and I think it reflects it in the style of music. It's so it's so produced. If that oh, makes yeah. sense, exactly. Like, everything like... is crystal clear. Um, mm-hmm. It's good. I mean, there there's still like a lot of the songs on here still have that gangster rap feel that we loved in the early to mid '90s, but. It seems fabricated to me from a musical standpoint because yeah. when you listen to some of that, you know, we, we reviewed not too long ago the uh, Bone Thugs creeping on a come up. And then, like, if you want to talk really, really way back, look at, like, the super early NWA, 3-6 Mafia, Project Pat. I know there's a little bit of a time difference there, but they're mm-hmm. super early. Or, you want to talk super gangster, not lyrically, but I'm talking about production-wise, ICP dog beats, basement cuts. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's, that's that. what I'm talking that's about. When wrong. I hear that stuff, I'm like, okay, like, I be- these, this is believable. You yeah, know what I mean? They sound gangster. This recording is gangster. <laughs> exactly, and that's one thing I love about it. So, you know, I'm not going to, you know, disrespect them or not believe what they have to say, but I'm saying just from a presentation standpoint, that was one of my big complaints. And then a lot of the songs just – you know, they, there was three or four that were really, really good. And then the rest of them were just kind of, meh, you know, yeah. just for me anyway. So, yeah, no, I mean, I can see where you come from. I mean, cause like you said, it's a, it gets almost repetitive at some point They're They're on the same subject, like hot mouth Kings, you know, you can only stand so much here and somebody's, you know, rap about smoking pot before you're like, all right, here's, here you say something else. <laughs> <You know? laughs> all right. So one star being the worst five stars being the best. What do you give this album? I gave this album a four. I gave it a three. Because of what I said about just, it seems like it's the end of the gangster rap thing, and they're still yeah. kind of trying. A uh, couple really, really solid songs on here. The rest kind of average. That's why I gave it an average score. So that I mean, that average is out to three and a half. That's not too bad. No, not bad at all. Especially for being number two in '96 on the radio. That's that pumps me up. <laughs> uh, it pumps me up, but at the same time, that's just so sad that oh, yeah. you know. Like, could you imagine going like going to turn the radio on right now and being able to hear something of this quality? On, yeah, like, like who banging just comes on ninety six five? It's like what? What is this? Yeah, exactly. Oh man, that would be awesome. That would make my day actually. 
<laughs> All right, well, that's going to be it for this edition of the Vault Reviews. Make sure to check us out, iTunes, Stitcher, Podomatic, YouTube, subscribe, comment. Let us know what you want to hear. Um, you can send us that on any social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and you can send things via email, thevaultmusic1 at gmail.com. Let us know what you want to review. Let us know what you like, dislike. What do you think of this album? You know, we'd like to hear your thoughts on it to see kind of where everything stacks up. So until next review, see you later.